bring up our next two. Oh, yay! You know what? That man knows what's going on. Can bring to the stage Mr. Kit Harrington and Miss Amelia Clark. Graduating to something else. 
Um, you mentioned that you played a lot of roles. You have been in a large amount of legacy franchises, right? Terminator, Star Wars. Um, I, I hear there's a, a spot in Futurama. <clears throat> Uh, and that okay, someone said that to me as well, in the list of stuff, they were like, future all rows. Is that now? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. No, for those of us who own, I mean, I don't know. Every series, series. Um, you know, every season of that show. Um, and you, you've done a lot of voiceover, and obviously you've played the Sarah. Um, what does the ideal role look like? what it was maybe before. I mean, I, I just, I just wanted to do everything, clearly. <laughs> and I had the, the incredible luck of being able to do so many different roles. But um, my characters need to have um, agency. I think that's something that I like to see through, a good art within this, the kind of development of that character kind of agent, the discovery of self-agency being maybe one of them. But as I've gotten older, the, thing, the single thing that I really try to align myself with is the, is the filmmaker. It's like the, the, the thing you're walking into. What is your day-to-day -day experience going to be? Because life is too short. <laughs> to wake up and not want to go to work. You know what I mean? I love it. Um, so, kid, one, I also forgot to say congratulations. <laughs> Two small children in your home. Yeah, a boy and a girl. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's amazing. She's absolutely. She's just beautiful. She's just a week old, and she's she's a week and a half old, and she's just. Oh. And my boy's doing really, really well with it. He's being a good big brother. He's um, you know, it's it. As anyone who knows kids, especially multiple kids, knows it's awesome. Red, absolutely <laughs> bone crunchingly knackering. Um, but uh, filled with, it's all the oxymorons. It's like fear and joy, um, you know, all of the, it's all of those different feelings at all at the same time. It's amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. Rose is doing really well. We're very, very happy. I love it. Yeah. Um, so, one of the things that I've noticed about your roles is they've all been strong, complex, sometimes dark um, characters, uh, whether they're creative nonfiction or they are nonfiction, they are real, true to life characters. For you, what do you feel like is a role that you want to explore more once you get some sleep? Uh, yeah. Uh, at the moment, I'm just, I'm sort of seemingly only interested in morally dubious characters. Um, I think that comes from playing a completely morally perfect character for 10 years. Um, and to a fault, that was his, literally his weakness, was his, his, his morality. Um, so at the moment, I, I'm, I'm responding to anything that is um, that darkness that you mentioned, but it, but they're not just villain, and I'm not just, just a villain. It's it's someone who is is a is a complex mixture of um, of mistakes and um, and the kind of walls we put up to kind of guard against those mistakes, and then ends up being this kind of sort of morally crippled person. Like that, if that makes sense, that's what. I'm you're looking for complexity. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we got some fan questions I want to get to before y'all get back to signing and taking photos. Um, so, Ashley Nugent at Willow00094 from Atlanta, Georgia. What was your guys' favorite part about working with each other, and are there any plans to work together again? Y'all ask questions I don't have to ask. Thank you. I mean, it was it was because we were friends. Yeah. Before, like we hung out. We were we were buddies <laughs> before before we ever did anything on camera. I remember the first day when we said we would be short on camera, and it was we just couldn't stop laughing. We were like, this is a bit weird. <laughs> you in your costume? It was so weird seeing you in costume. Yeah, that was the strangest thing. I was like, I can't take it seriously. Yeah. It was a very serious scene. <laughs> yeah. It, it was it was weird. I remember that distinctly. Like season seven, we'd spent. 
six years as friends and friends off set and like seeing each other only in costume really on like photo shoots or on screen and then suddenly stepping on as these two like characters that somehow gone into this big show and become this big thing like, this isn't like, we're just little Brits. What's that? What are we doing? Yeah. But then I remember that Literally first. Literally, little Brits. Like, it's yes. little Brits. Yeah. yeah. But then I remember that one of the first scenes we were stood in front of the fire, we were having a debate. It was before our characters had romantically been named. And I remember being like, oh, this is nice. This is like, it's really good. And I know him. This is easy. This is really just kind of, but I do remember the day, the, the, our, our sexy day, and my brother was in the camp department. Did you day. say your sexy day? No, our sexy, sorry, yeah, our sexy Oh no, I love it, right? I, I do, I do yeah. love sexy. Perfect. <laughs> and my brother was, and my brother's in the camp department, and he was on set that day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a you call him out here. He's not allowed to, keep him busy. Oh, mortifying. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so we have Sari Moscato from Cleveland, Ohio. For both of you. Other than a wolf or a dragon, if you yourself had an animal helper in real life, what species would each of you choose can be mythical? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> unicorns are up for the taking. I always like pandas. <laughs> I did, I always had little pandas. Yeah, as a kid I had little little pandas, so I've got a thing for pandas, so I think I'd have a panda. I can totally see that. Yeah. Hey kid, hey panda. Yeah. We just have like a backyard full of, you know, bamboo and panda gets to roam. I, I... Yeah, yeah. They're wicked creatures, they're desperately trying to um, yeah, extinct themselves, which I kind yeah, of love. They just don't want to have sex. They don't want to have sex. <laughs> um, I feel like I have a spirit. Exists. Okay. His name is Ted. Okay. He's a little tiny miniature dachshund, and he's my baby. So yeah, gen and I genuinely like the more time, the older that he gets, yeah. the more I'm like, yeah, we're the same. same. Yeah, yeah, we're the same. Generally, the same thing. Yeah. yeah. No, I I appreciate that. I have a golden doodle, and his name is Dumont, and it's the same thing. Um, so, Andressa from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, for Kit. I would like to ask Kit if there's a role or a specific type of character that he wants to play, or, or because I feel like you've answered the first one, what is the hardest part of being an actor? Uh, I'll just go with that second, second one. The hardest part of being an actor is, uh, is, is our heads. Um, I don't think they're too big. They're hard to carry around. Um, no, I, I, I think every actor I know where they sort of beats themselves up in their head all the time. Like, I think that our job is to come out here and look really ultra confident and like that we are, and that's our job on set, is to walk on set and convince you that we're completely confident in these characters. But we're a whole heaving mass of like, um, anxiety and um, self-doubt and all of those things. And I think that when, I, when someone sort of says to me they want to be an actor, that's what I'm looking for with them. It's like, are you a heaving mass of self-doubt? Yeah. Because you're sort of in the same way with the superheroes battling against not comparing actors to superheroes. Yes, you are. I am. <laughs> um, that they're fighting, their, their superpower is fighting against the thing. I think that's what you're battling against as an actor, is that you've always been socially self-conscious. And the way you found to deal with that is to step up on stage and, and speak to you, or to step in front of the camera, whatever you do. So I think the hardest thing about being an actor is that we're wrapped up in our own heads like crazy, and it drives us mad. Well, the, the reason why we want to be other people is because we don't like ourselves. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like the universal thing. Most actors, you find an actor who actually likes himself, and you're like, you know, an actor. Really? <laughs> why do you want to do this? Why pretend to be someone else? Exactly. Um, so, uh, I love this name. Khaleesi. Yes. Kelly Clark. Mm, Kelly, mm, 
She's gonna correct me later. Uh, so it's actually, her name is Marcy Potado from Para Brazil. My question is for Emilia. What most struck her about the character of Gaia to want to play her? Oh my goodness. She just felt real. She just felt real in a very real, grounded show that kind of talked about things that, I mean, the joy of doing anything fantasy, the joy of reading any fantastical or like magic realism narrative is that it's, it's a way of looking at bigger <coughs> issues in the world, problems you face, philosophical ideas in its own space that allows us to see the problem for what it is and really digest it because it's not, you're not reading by yourself, does that make sense? You're able to step into almost a parable. Exactly that. And this show feels like that so much. And then also Samuel L. Jackson. You know what I mean? One of the high vibes. Samuel L. Jackson. I mean, yes. I don't know how anyone keeps a straight face on any of these sets. <laughs> All right, so last question. Yep, last question. Elena Collins from Houston, Texas. Got in with Texas. For both of you, how did your experience on a big production like Rain of Thrones help prepare you for what to expect on a Marvel set? And also, what was different than what you expected? I feel like, I feel like, I don't know about you, but the films that I did in between the series of Game of Thrones, they'd be like, now this is a TV, it's gonna feel really different, and I'm like, uh huh. <laughs> I mean, sure. And I'd get there and be like, guess what? Mine's bigger. Yeah, I mean, it's actually like, like wish me 10 of these films every single season. Yeah. Like, that's what it is. So I feel like it prepared, it, I don't know, the this, this scale prepared me for pretty much every job I've ever done at since. Yeah, I am, um, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, my Marvel experience is not as long as Amelia's. It's, it's just a bit of a Marvel movie, but in that, in that time on that Marvel movie, just experiencing quite what they were able to do as much as shut down Camden for a whole two nights or something. Yeah, because that scene was big, yeah. and it it had to take an army. Yeah, and that, and that was one of their, like, what, ten movies they were making at that time. That gave me an idea of the scale and scope of it, but I have to agree with Amelia, like, I, I, one thing that Thrones maybe in some ways, it's a slight kind of curse because we spent 10 years on a show that was as big as any movie I think I'll ever do. And it just gave me, in a strange way, a skewed experience of what, I, what movies and TV were because there was nothing bigger than Rome. As far as set builds and the world they created, it was genuinely humongous. Like, try and think of it. Could, could you ever think of doing a movie that is anywhere close to being as big as Battle of the Bastards. Yeah, or the, what they that built in the, final, in the final season, the oh set God, thing yeah. of, of um, yeah. King's Land. Yeah. I've never seen a set like that. No, and I, I don't think there's cool. anything, you know, I haven't obviously been on loads of Marvel sets, I'm sure that they're just as big, but I can't imagine they'd be bigger than that set. They just, Marvel just have bigger movie stars. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, the even the concept of you fangirling over another actor and just the reminder that y'all are just human and oh people God, yeah. love doing your jobs. Oh yeah, I didn't say anything other than my lines to Samuel Jackson for the first like two weeks because I was just too scared. He was like, "Oh, you're gonna work." I was like, <laughs> "Makes you feel any better?" I have no clue what I would say to Samuel Jackson. I mean, just want to hug him. I mean, yeah. yeah, I'm sure he gets great hugs. He does. <laughs> All right, you have a lot, a lot, a lot of fans to meet today. I want to thank you so much for this incredible <laughs>